fucking hell. How do I YouTube? It's been... It's been... It's been four months since I've uploaded a video. It's been four long months. So, um... Before I get into the review, which is obviously, you know, it's the title, it's the thumbnail, it's everything. Before I get into that, I want to give a little bit of a, an update to where I've been. I think I've said a lot th about this on my Instagram, but, uh, you know, there's obviously more parts to it than I can just say through text, if that makes sense. So firstly, I said that I uh, had been working on an album, which is technically true. I've been working on an album for a while, but... Uh, that's a little bit of a deceiving message because this is perhaps the slowest album work ever created and not because I'm spending so much time on it it's because I'm not spending any time on it uh, and that's for a multitude of reasons uh, firstly I just haven't really felt motivated recently to write music um, that is within a subset of reasons of that I've hit a lot of writer's block and also just the motivation uh, and the inspiration just isn't there secondly I don't have time <laughs> I don't have time to work on music, uh, even if I did want to, I just don't have time. And a lot of the reason for that is because of school, obviously. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a busy bee, uh, and I'd say the class that takes up the most time for me is probably uh, AP European History. And uh, I'm not going to get into all the weeds with that, but we do learn a lot about the uh, Renaissance in that period. Um, so I, I think I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I have a pretty good historical background on the Renaissance and what its historical values meant, and you can already see where the segue is going. I thought it was kind of funny when Five Way Kenji made an album called The Renaissance, and I was like, ooh, that's interesting, considering I know uh, quite a bit about the Renaissance, and uh, now I have to review an album called The Renaissance. Uh, <clears throat> it just, it just, uh, it's just a coincidence that's too good to be true. Um, and I want to say one more thing before I get into it. I've been getting a lot of requests over these past four months to do reviews and everything. Um, and I said I would get around to it, and I never got around to it. Uh, it's not as a diss towards these people that I'm not wanting to do it. But it's more that I thought I would have the time to be able to do it. And I didn't. So... This is the first time in a long time where I've actually just been able to sit down and make a video where I've not only had the motivation to make one, but I've actually been like interested in doing it. So I, I hope that makes sense. Uh, and that's all the disclaimers out of the way. So obviously with this new album from Five Way Kenji, we haven't heard anything from him in quite a while in terms of albums. I think the last one that he made... I don't even remember the name of it. It's been it's been that long. I'm kind of, I'm quite out of the loop with the community because I just haven't had time. But I digress. Um, one of the core values of the Renaissance as a historical period was humanism, and kind of a focus on emotions and the human experience, which I think is a theme that's portrayed very very well throughout this album. Uh, a lot of songs about emotion, whether it be in a relationship or self doubt um, or just what what is my worth as a human being is very uh it's explored in depth throughout this album and i really appreciate how um it really ties back into what actually happened during the renaissance not in like a very nerdy historical kind of way but just made this main huge concept of how do i display my emotions and what is the most effective way for me to do that and it's very well done in this album, and I can't fault Five Way Kenji for that. It's really a nice touch. The songs themselves are up to the Five Way Kenji standard that I think we've known he's had for quite a long time. The beats are, I think, some of the best he's ever had. Um, the beat for, I think, Symphony of Silence is what it's called. That has been one of my favorite beats he's ever used. I think he flows really nicely with it, and it just really works uh, quite well with his sound and his style. So I really do applaud that. The instrumentals all across the album are very solid. There was one which I have seen used quite a few times, most notably in uh, Chris's song, Black Heart. There was a sample in that song that I think was uh, passed around for uh, many different artists to use, um, including Chris, as I've said, and Five Way Kenji. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. It is a very, very catchy and uh, emotional sample that really fits in quite well with whatever you do to it. Um, and I, th I think that I think it worked really well in his case. So the instrumentals just all around, as I've said before, are uh, very solid on this part. Uh, his lyrics, um, 
I have been very critical of his lyrics before because I've said that he's making bars just for the sake of making bars, but I don't genuinely believe that is the case in this scenario, fortunately. Uh, I think some of his punchlines were really witty and relevant uh, as opposed to some of the ones he did on, uh, I don't know, the, the, I don't remember the name, but it was that EP that I didn't like. I can put it on the screen or whatever. Um, anyway, so I think his lyrics, um, for the most part, are generally very uh, emotional and witty and lyrical. Throughout this album, they make sense and they provide a bro broader context to the overall theme or message he's trying to portray within the song, not just on a tinier scale to what he's saying in the current moment. And I think that's something that's really hard to do, but he does it very well in, in these uh, songs. The one criticism I have about um, the album structure is that I'm not entirely sure why uh, Can't Move On and Can't Move On Part 2 wasn't just one song, because they both have the same subject matter, and they're both kind of the same thing overall. They have, they have the same title, same message, same same overall idea. So not only does it not make sense for it to just be one song, but I don't understand why they're in two separate places uh, at the beginning and end of the album. Maybe there's some uh, underlying message that I'm missing there, but it doesn't make sense to me personally. Um, it's not it's not like a, the most massive deal in the world. It's just a little bit of a... Um, it's a little bit unsatisfying to think you've finished a song and you're ready to move on to the next one, but then uh, you get more of it later when you thought you already finished it. And it's not a bad song, I'm not saying that. It's just that it, I think there needs to be a continuity in how uh, the song structure goes on, if that makes sense. Uh, now, this album isn't only just emotional songs about breakups or love or whatever, that kind of thing. There are also some bangers on here, which I can also appreciate, considering that, once again, the Renaissance was a historical period of uh, humanism, not only in the context of emotion, but also of uh, speaking about one's personal glory instead of just all about religion. So I, I can also appreciate that that holds up historically as well. On those songs, it's very fast, it's very sharp, it's you gotta keep paying attention. It's a uh, blink and you'll miss it kind of thing, but if you are able to keep up at the rapid pace of how these songs work, and then are able to mentally prepare yourself for the next song might be about a breakup, and then the next song after that might be another banger, then it's a very enjoyable experience, but you have to be in that mindset because you can't just expect the same kind of thing because we've seen time and time again, including on this piece right here, he doesn't do that. So you have to be understanding and ready to be open-minded to the fact that there's going to be multiple kinds of songs within this album. And that's something that I think is also difficult to do, but he does it generally pretty well. There are things that could be improved about it, but that's just something that comes with experience. And this is obviously a very new kind of um, album making for him. So I can appreciate that he's trying to expand his reach in terms of his versatility and his vulnerableness when speaking about very sensitive subjects. Um, and that's something that I think that uh, is really, really important, and not only does he do it well, he does it repeatedly throughout the, this album, and that's something that is very admirable about it. So I think those are basically my overall thoughts. I think just generally it's a pretty good album. It's not it's not anything spectacular, like um, I thought Bloodthirsty was arguably his best work yet. This is a uh, this is a good start to a new chapter for him and seeing what he can open up doors with with this new kind of style and um, just seeing where this can take him is, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to see that. So I'm gonna give this album a seven out of 10. And yeah, uh, we're happy to have Five Boy Kenji back and making albums and making them good. And um, yeah, sorry for being gone so long. Uh, but don't expect me to start uploading every single day now. I'll upload when I get the chance, but it's so difficult to find time, and it's just going to get harder as I uh, take harder classes in the next two years. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching this, um, for the 10 people that are probably still sticking around. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace.